Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where we have something really quite special to take a look at today. I'm here with Abt in Kempton. This is the new Abt RSQ8 Signature Edition with some awesome details, including, can we take a quick look at this? A trophy from the 1950s, which I'll explain in just a moment. We'll take a look at how that ties in to this car. So let's have a bit of a reveal to see it in all of its glory before we're going to go through things in more detail and take it for a drive. But check this out, the new RSQ8 Signature Edition from Abt. So we'll run through all of the upgrades, the visual exterior options, all of the carbon fiber, the bespoke details, the performance upgrades. This makes a lot of power. They call it a racing utility vehicle, the full interior works and everything that makes it a special limited edition, only 96 units in total. Let's check it out. The RSQ8 Signature Edition. <laughs> There are so many amazing details to this, which we will explore in just a second, but I want to show alongside the Audi Quattro original looking magnificent as well. And over here, this setup, and I've been to visit before, but this tells us a quick bit of the story of Johann Abt. The company was originally founded way back in 1896. Johann Abt was a blacksmith, and last year at the 125th anniversary, they presented an RS6 Johann Abt Signature Edition, which featured parts of his original anvil inside a time capsule in the center, and you'll see what we've got this time around. So let's talk about this car. With the company having been founded in 1896, we have the 96 units based on the flagship Audi SUV, the RS Q8, the RS badge being brought to the Q8 platform. The stock car already has 600 horsepower. This has 800 horsepower. We'll go through more of the stats and figures in a moment, but you look at it, you can tell it's lower, it's meaner, it's wider. All of the carbon fiber against the myth black metallic paintwork that you have throughout. Every single part has been looked at. It's been wind tunnel tested. You have more power, more new wheels, a louder exhaust, and so many details. And come around towards the back of it, look at this. RUV, racing utility vehicle, they name it, because of that history, because of those links between Abt and Audi. In fact, they go back to the 1950s and the first ever trophy won by Johann Abt, the grandson of the founder, working with Audi back then. And that links to what we've just seen. So let's have a full exploration of this car, run through absolutely everything. But before we do, I want to grab this because this trophy is a very big part of it. This had been stored in the family vault since the 1950s. The 1956 trophy, the first trophy that Abt ever won. And rather than, let's say, marketing speak, they have genuinely taken this and taken little parts out of it, which are in the time capsule inside the car. No joke, they've done this the proper way. Let me pop that there and come and show you very quickly inside here exactly what we're talking about. There's a lot to this interior in terms of the retrimming and upgrades, but right in the very center, if you can spot that, we have a part of the trophy in each one of the 96 cars, genuinely. I love that attention to detail, those kind of things, those kind of elements that make something really quite stand out. Anyway, let's start right around the very front of this to go through I suppose everything to it. Obviously the carbon fiber, and they call it the bold carbon fiber. You can see this extra large weave that it features, whether that's around a single frame grill up here at the front, whether that's down towards the splitter uh, and lower splitter as well. You've got the RSQ8 signature edition badging there, which we find throughout the car as well. The intake surrounds gigantic amounts of cooling coming in through here for the twin turbo V8 engine. We've got these extra large wheel arch surrounds as well. A specific wheel that's been created just for this car also, a forged wheel design. You can see the unique styling they've gone for, obviously here with the signature edition badging as well. You see that throughout because they've taken every single part of the car and looked at it in a lot more detail. So side skirts, mirror caps, coming towards the back, we've got the lip spoiler. And what they've done up here is with the carbon and then continuing with the black as well. But even the parts that come down the side of the rear glass towards the back itself, the central piece, obviously you've got the black look for the badging for the Audi rings and also for the Abt logo down here, more carbon fiber. And for somebody like me who rather likes carbon fiber, this is a very nice place to be. Signature edition logos again down here. We've got the quad tailpipes for the exhaust system looking mean and we're going to experience plenty more of those 
went out on the road in just a moment, but obviously there's a lot more to the interior as well. And we take a look at here, one detail that really, really stands out to me, which shows you how far this goes, is that even the engine bay release lever down here has been made in carbon fiber, everything. Just, just have a like better look inside here for a moment. We've got carbon pieces everywhere you look, even the trim panels here, the seat sides, down here, everything's been redone. Restitched interior and seating and the embroideries. You've got in the center console, the armrest with the embossing as well. You've got the carbon fiber surrounds and trim pieces, the shift lever in the center. The steering wheel is Alcantara. The roof and headline is Alcantara. The door cards, if we come over this way also, you've got this rather nice stitch design. You've got the RSQ8 badging just here as well and they've replaced things like the normal plastic that you'd have over the top of the door card top rolls this has been done with proper leather to make it quite nice and look here look over here even this little a pillar base piece is with carbon fiber as well absolutely everything the sill kick plates we've got the lighting on the floor also every single detail that's in the front but it also continues to the rear and even in the boot. Have a look back here. Just a really, really nice place to be. Every single detail, all very, very well presented. And then if we come back here also, just to show you quickly back in here, more nice touches. Even this is Alcantara. Even the boot liner is done with Alcantara. Inside the boot itself, you actually have this that folds out to protect from getting scratches and scuffs on your paintwork if you need to lift things in. Ingenious. Simple, but a very, very nice detail. Anyway, let's close this back down because I think it's going to be time to get this started and take it out for a drive to go see what it's like. No, we need to take a look at the engine bay. How could I forget that? I need to cut myself off and come and check this out. Big part of the car, of course, automatic gearbox, permanent four wheel drive, but this is a car that normally has 600 horsepower and 800 Newton meters. We now, from the four litre twin turbo V8, have plus 200 horsepower up to 800 and plus 200 Newton meters up to 1,000 Newton meters. 800 horsepower, 1,000 Newton meters. The RSQ8 signature edition plaques here, abd power, made in Germany, but also the number, and this car is the prototype, so zero of 96, but of course they will be individually numbered. They will actually have one of 96, two of 96, three of 96. Not just that all of the cars are a generic one of the 96, they will be individually numbered, and I love that. Zero to 100 kilometers an hour, 62 miles an hour, 3.2 seconds. Zero to, no, top speed, 315 kilometers an hour, which coincidentally, by the way, given we're talking 96, the top speed of 315 kilometers an hour would be 196 miles an hour. Anyway, it's time to get this started. We shall head on out with it, go for a little drive and see what it's like on the road. This is one of those days where the weather can't decide if it wants to be sunny or pouring with rain, but let's hope we get some dry spells to go out to the Autobahn for a bit of a drive with this machine 800 horsepower as they say not just an suv but an ruv a racing utility vehicle because abd and motorsport and in fact in front of me right now is their motorsports division obviously have a lot of history in that world a lot of experience out on the racetrack and their team who work on those cars are now working on this as well and creating something obviously for the road but with that kind of ethos and the significant upgrades, both in terms of the aero, but also in terms of the powertrain and everything about it. But in, I suppose, expected fashion, getting started like this, it feels super pleasant, super comfortable. All of the latest tech, I've never been the biggest fan of the haptic touchscreens. I find these a little bit fiddly and awkward at times, but it's certainly loaded in terms of equipment, safety systems, technology, all of the infotainment controls you could possibly want, and then so many lovely details. And I'm sorry to keep saying it, but you look around and everything is finished in a really nice way. Not that the standard car isn't nice, but this just refines it even further, makes it a touch more bespoke, even more unique, even more special. Although I say unique, but actually every one of these cars is finished to the exact same specification in this Myth Black or Mythos Black paintwork 
with the carbon fiber as you see it on this example. So out we head, let's go find some slightly twisty roads to get a feel for the car, and then we'll head to the Autobahn. At the moment, just cruising along with everything in automatic, this is where in this car you have all of the different configurable settings. You have drive select, which is a little bit awkward to find while you're driving. You do have to kind of look down where you have your all road, off road, efficiency, comfort, auto, or let's say dynamic modes, which just change throttle response, gearbox, as you can hear a little bit more noise out of it. It is very calm and peaceful at slow speeds. Obviously we have all of the lane assist and that side of things running at the moment as well. But you also have, via the buttons mounted on the steering wheel, the button for the RS modes, Audi RS1 and RS2, which I'm very familiar with from the RS3 long-termer that we've been running at the Schmuseum. And that just allows you to even further enhance the sporty characteristics. And the car changes and adjusts its ride height as you'd probably expect in the modern era in terms of this technology, spotting the app logos in the door mirrors as well. All of those small touches that remind you what you're driving. But as we go along, and you know, we'll go foot flat on the Autobahn in a moment, you're aware that it's a sportier car. I mean, the RSQ8 is a very sporty car to begin with, and I've driven the RSQ8R with app before. Yeah, you feel that sense of power. I mean, I'm barely squeezing on the throttle pedal. 800 horsepower is a lot, however big and heavy the car might be. That's a serious, serious number. And just driving along, these gearboxes have got so good these days, you just let it do what it does. And it's in sport mode at the moment, conscious that it's a huge old car. Obviously the Q8 platform sharing with many of the Volkswagen Group models, the Lamborghini Urus, Porsche Cayenne, and plenty others, Bentley Bentayga, for example, all doing things slightly differently. But you could argue the RSQ8 is the sweet spot of the selection. It offers a lot of performance from standard, 600 horsepower. It offers a lot of technology. It's all just there and ready to rock and roll. I'm actually really conscious that it's a very big old thing. And you feel that weight over the front end with the engine. But this is a car that I think is very much made for autobahn blasts. And that's where if we get a break in the weather, we might give it a go in a moment. Less so for meandering down these kind of roads. Although obviously if we go into RS2, it's probably set up. Yes, ESC goes into sport. Manually drop some gears just for a moment, just to hear some of this. <laughs> yes, it comes a little bit more to life. Okay, yeah, that's more what I'm talking about. Goodness me. Okay, into a town, let's slow down and experience a bit more of this the other way. This is where I drop it to second gear, put the foot down. Goodness me. <laughs> yes, zero to 62 or 100 kilometers an hour, 3.2. No question, that's for sure. That gets an absolute move on. To be honest, I think I prefer it when you do turn it to slightly sportier settings, when you do have the car set up more with that kind of character. It just, I mean, I always do when I'm driving, but also just, I'm not one for wafting along as a car like this is obviously engineered to do. And the improvements in suspension are obviously significant versus not all that long ago with modern cars in terms of the weight and larger form factor of an SUV being disguised, even in comparison with saloons and estates of only a decade or two ago. Obviously this sits a touch lower than standard. It rides on much, much bigger wheels, but here in Germany where the tarmac is so beautifully smooth, that's a non-issue. You barely would even notice those changes, to be honest. Down a slightly bumpy British road, perhaps could be a different story, not entirely sure, but out here it certainly works and does the job. So let's go find somewhere where we can use a touch more of the 800 horsepower and use it without breaking any rules. All right then, still in RS2 at the moment, out we go onto the Autobahn, cars flying by, wheel straight, and away we go. And yeah, it takes off. You very much feel the whole car pitching as obviously the power is being delivered to all four wheels, permanent four wheel drive set up. But this is a car that you would use obviously as a daily. I think to the untrained eye, this looks like a slightly sporty Audi SUV, right? It doesn't look like, it doesn't have that, let's say showy presence, but when you know the details and when you're looking at exactly what this is and start to study it up closely and see, for example, that piece of the trophy inside, you get an appreciation that 
it's actually something with a lot more both historical significance, capability and emotional attachment to it than just the let's say basic Audi SUV. Now, I've not been the biggest fan of the Q8 and the Urus and these kind of cars when I've driven them to date because it's not so much my kind of thing. So I have to be a little bit, you know, balanced in that perspective. Obviously, I have to work on the base models from Audi. So they've taken the Audi car and added this spice of life and extra, you know, dynamic capability to it. It does look like it's quite busy out here at the moment. But when you're in RS2, you've got a lovely display in the center with the rev counters rising. I've got a brilliant heads up display as well, which shows me a lot of information, de-restricted gear, speed, uh, oil temperature, and a rev counter. It's a very nice image out in front. And we've got all those things like the blinds for the back and you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm looking around and just feeling it. I just hope we're gonna get an opportunity to explore a little further perhaps down the line. Now it opens up. This is ridiculous. For a car this big, you're telling me that's 250 odd kilometers an hour? <laughs> that picks up remarkably fast without all that much drama. Obviously, as I mentioned, the front very much lifts up into the air, but it just gets a move on. And you know, if you wanted a car to just crunch miles around Germany, down the Autobahn, like this, I mean, that's, what more could you ask for? You could be doing this with your family of five, your pets in the boot, a load of luggage as well. This and the RS6, which I've often enjoyed driving from Abt, do that job so brilliantly. Yeah, I mean, drop some gears, fourth gear, foot down, away it goes, just away it flies, takes off 200, 220, 240, 260, 270, 280, see a car overtaking a truck, but 280 kilometers an hour, it's 172 I think miles an hour, Obviously not too far off from its top end speed. Just aware that it's quite a big old thing going past other people as well on the road when you're like that. But this is the thing, when safe to do so, this is where a car like this just absolutely stands out into its own. Just cruising along at 200, it doesn't feel anything like it. Even with today's weather lightly drizzling on us. Very, very impressive. It is super busy in this direction. Super, super, super busy, uh, unfortunately. We're just gonna put a slight stop to the fun, but nonetheless, a great experience to just give that a go. It's actually quite dramatic when you do put your foot down and the car kind of takes off. It, you know, you feel that like sense of excitement and just all around craziness of what's going on in the sense of it being an SUV. Obviously nothing compared to, let's say, a supercar or something like that. But when you do go for it, it's just, oh, there we go. There's a little wait for the, the turbos to kick into life. Obviously heavy reworks to get so much power out of it. It's not just a case of popping on a different tune to increase the power by 200 horsepower and the torque by 200 newton meters. Those are some serious gains, but this is Abt's area of expertise, obviously with the work that they've done over many years, and I've been to visit countless times over the last decade to drive various different cars. And they're always this sense of understated improvement. You know, it's not massively out there, like some of the different tuners, for example, but everything is carefully worked, is warranty backed, is tuned, is tested, sorry, is the word I'm looking for, is done for what you want as the customer. It's exactly what you want. And they take these quality bases with the Audi cars, particularly obviously the RS models, to work from. And the result is two plus two becomes a lot more than four. You know, it becomes five or six. It's, it's that kind of work. Anyway, I think, judging by what's in front of me, one last little spurt of power for the moment. And then let me pop it back into automatic. Let me pop it back into completely normal, not even dynamic lots of buttons and modes to have to go through, but back into full automatic everything, where you barely hear any of the exhaust, particularly over the noise of the rain on the windshield. And it's just your comfortable cruiser. And that's the whole two characters of it, right? Anyway, let's head back to base, back to Abt, 
and have a last little look at some of the other details. Everything in here has been looked at, and I very much like the Alcantara steering wheel. I also very much like these extended carbon fiber shift paddles on the back, where you have that big bold weave as well, which also continues across the dashboard, around the central tunnel, this whole surround piece. You've got the number of the car again here, which actually illuminates as well. So zero of 96 for the prototype in this particular example. But everywhere you look, they've focused on these details on the shifter. As we mentioned, this fabulous detail that they first did with the anvil. And I think it would be easy to assume if you hear something like this, that it's marketing speak. But as we've seen, the proof is in the trophy on in the inside that this is actually something they've done to bring a bit of that history into the new car. Now, if you pop this open, underneath you have your usual 12 volt socket, your spot to pop the key, and also your cup holders tucked inside there. If we open up the armrest, we're just quickly, as I said earlier, we've got this embossing with the abt logo. I say embossing, I think it's actually kind of lasered out of the top layer of the leather with the RSQ8 signature edition handcrafted to perfection. And just Alcantara everywhere. Back here, there's more carbon fiber again, uh, in the rear of the car. This can actually be put to multiple different positions depending how you'd like to have it, or obviously opened up where inside you have your wireless charging pad, some storage space, you've got your USB-C ports, all of that tech, all of that functionality, everything that you want out of a car like this. Looking around, we've got the lovely large glass roof above us. The rear, as I mentioned again, has those embroideries, the RSQ8 signature edition, on each of the two main seats. You can fold down all of that independently. Loads of practicality. We don't need to get into too much of all of that and the screens, although very briefly, up top is where you have your infotainment, you have the tiles, you have all the different settings, and the lower haptic screen is where you have your climate control and everything that's more to do with the functionality um, and comforts in that respect. I do find it a little bit awkward to change through the different driving modes. If you press the RS button on the right of the steering wheel, you can change the mode. You can hear the exhaust valve opens and it also adjusts the suspension. So you feel it kind of doing this rocking as it's lowering it down to look a little bit more sporty as well. But being an Audi Q8, it's got a lot of different technology. There's a lot of different things that you can do and that you can change and that you can play with. So inside here, it's a nice place to be. But let's have a last look outside as well. The weather today is all over the place and I've just got out of the car massively windy, but now we've kind of got the sun on us as well. So I have no idea what's going on, but this car is a little bit dirtier than it was. It makes a statement of intent, doesn't it? With this diffuser, with those gigantic exhaust tailpipes, even though you might not necessarily spot it at first. And that's one of the things, as I said, that Abt always do quite so well. Despite having 23 inch wheels, it still rides really nicely on the roads around here. It is a big car. There's no hiding that. It is very wide. It is very large, but that's, Part of the fun right now it is spectacularly windy so i should probably start to wrap things up there but super limited edition only 96 cars in total lovely touches and nods to abs history to the company's story really and obviously these cars are very very popular they sell out very very fast for good reason they do a really nice job of it everything is finished to a very high quality and standard and the interior is super super top end as well but for today i think that is all thank you very much to abs for the opportunity to come and take a look at this brand new car on the day of its launch as well and thank you as always to you guys for watching your support is hugely appreciated but that is it for this time and i'll see you again very soon cheers